So, if you look at uh, the temperature distribution, temperature gradient, in resistance part welding, the temperature gradient is extremely high. Okay. So, therefore, the heat affected zone, the width of the heat affected zone is very, very low, okay, very small. So, why because? Because of the effective heat transfer in the process. Right. If you look at uh, the, uh, this is the cross section, the FEM simulation which we carried out and, and other point is it is very difficult to measure the temperature by X months. Okay. If you attach a thermocouple, it is very difficult to get the temperature. Why? Because the, the you are passing a current. If you attach the thermocouple, that will also influence your temperature measurements. Pyrometer, how do you measure? Because the weld is not exposed. Okay, so the weld is contained. You will be measuring only the surface between the electrode and the, the, the sample. Okay, so that is always it's cool, isn't it? So the best way is to uh, simulate for a given condition, and uh, the physics is well established. Okay, what have I talked about? I squared R. That's it. So, once you know precisely the contact resistance, everything can be calculated. So, trick is to get the contact resistance. Okay. So, once you know the contact resistance, I square RT and then Q by MCP, that is it. So, then we can solve for heat transfer, conduction and then convection radiation. We can solve for it. Then we know exactly the temperature distribution in the well naked side. Okay. So, then we can get the exact temperature distribution uh, from room temperature while applying whatever thermal cycle, so well, an enhanced thermal cycle or the other thermal cycle. Yes, it is clear. So, this is a typical well thermal cycle you get. So, again this is 1.2 mm, I am sorry because I like 1.2 mm. Okay. So, this is 1.2 mm thick uh, plate. So, if you look at uh, the temperature distribution, so the maximum you can go so, this is again the cross section. So, this is uh, the cross section of the electrode, uh, the, the entire cross section okay. and this is the center. So, now if you look at uh, the temperature distribution, so you form a fusion boundary, so you are below which you have a uh, the heat affected zone and above which you have a well center line. Okay. So, the nugget we form generally it is an elliptical shape, okay. so, but so you will have a something like this and can so the flashing happens so for example this the fusion boundary extends to the the surface of the the plate so then you will have splashing isn't it it's clear so if you look at the so this is the temperature uh, distribution and you already reach to a uh, close to room temperature somewhere about the 1 mm from the fusion boundary okay so already from say 1400 centigrade you reach to room temperature within a, a 1 mm distance. So, the temperature gradient is extremely high and due to that you, you minimize the heat affected zone significantly. But the problem is not due to heat affected zone in resistance part welding. The problem is because of the well central line segregation. So, suppose, suppose if you solidify this nugget, the solidification would happen in a columnar manner. right? So, you will have a a grind coat happening like this from the fusion boundary, they grow like this. And if you look at this growth, so obviously the liquid which solidifies the end is at the middle of the well center line, is not it? So, that is the region, it is the highest temperature you expect. So, that is the region, it solidifies at the end. So, the allying elements which are partitioning from the solidifying solid to liquid will all enrich the well center line. Right, so that is the the brittle region in this entire well nugget because of the enrichment of allying elements. So now, if you are uh, after welding, if you apply a load, say for example tensile load, shear load, so you already have an interface which is not joined here. So this is like a notch, isn't it? So it's like a notch, and you pull plates apart in engineering application for example you apply a load okay and then you expect the stress concentration to happen at this region isn't it and then if you have a very brittle well center line the crack would go open continue and then 
the well will fail completely. So, now trick is to avoid such a failure. So, that is why we use the post well thermal cycles, okay. So, that now we can homogenize or we change the microstructure in these regions. So, that you know we, we um, the arrest the crack propagation from the, the edge of the, the fusion boundary to the well center. Clear? So, this slide shows the temperature distribution. You always say the temperature gradient is very high, extremely high because of the effective heat transfer from the, uh, uh, the well to the, uh, the electrode. So, you would expect a maximum temperature gradient leading to a minimization of heat affected zone. Okay. So, if you are moving say even from 1 mm from the fusion boundary, the material will be in uh, room temperature. It's clear? Good. So, you can look at a, a thermal cycle. So, for example, I, I showed you one at the center and the one at the edge. Okay. You see the time. Okay. So, it is hardly 400 milliseconds. Simple. So, material is heated up to a temperature at the center as high as uh, say 800 800 degrees centigrade, 2000 Kelvin. Right. Imagine material is heated up from uh, say room temperature 2000 Kelvin in uh, 100 milliseconds. So, extremely fast heating as well as cooling rate. Okay. So, within uh, no time material is cooled from a melting point to room temperature. Okay, so, the heating rate and cooling rate can be as high as 1000 to 2000 Kelvin per second. So, in this case even 4000 Kelvin per second. So, this is the actual uh, predicted thermal cycle for a weld I showed you in the previous graph. So, the entire weld thermal cycle can be completed so within uh, half a second. Right? So, the weld is formed that is it. So, this is what you know, uh, makes this process very attractive for uh, the, uh, the production where you have to make 5000 wells in 2 minutes. Okay. So, we will have a 4 or 5 robots okay. and then uh, they would do and uh, all the jobs within 2 minutes uh, the entire chassis is welded. Right? So, because of uh, the such a fast uh, heating and cooling we use and even if you apply on a, on a short pulsing subsequently it does not take more than 100 seconds extra. Right? So, the entire process can be completed at an extremely rapid pace. Yes, it is clear? Good. So, if you look at uh, the schematic of uh, the well nugget which is actually formed, so you always have a uh, columnar growth from the fusion boundary. So, this is again the base material and the copper electrodes. So, if it is liquid then you will have a columnar growth which is formed from the solidification from the fusion boundary and uh, in, a, in, a, in a steel or a, an even aluminum alloys. So, you always have a segregation at the liquid which is left unsolidified. Right? So, in this well nugget the well center is the last solidifying region. So, the all the alloying elements which are segregating to the untransformed un unsolidified liquid would enrich the regions of the well center line and also at the uh, solidification primary grain boundaries. Right? It is clear. So, unless you do an, uh, uh, some magic, so this well is going to be very brittle. Okay? So, as such for a say low carbon steel or simple steel, you do not have any problem because segregation is not that significant. So, the moment you increase the alloying elements, okay, so you will end up uh, uh, making an weld uh, brittle because of the segregation of the weld center line due to the solidification pattern. You always have an, uh, a columnar growth growing from uh, the fusion boundary towards the weld center line because that is how you extract the heat, is not it? So, you will have a, a very steep temperature gradient and then the weld solidifies from the fusion boundary towards the well center line. It 
clear? Yes or no? So, apart from that you also apply a load, right? It is clear? So, that will also influence the stresses that are developing during solidification, right? It is clear? So, the both will influence the cracking in some alloys. So, this is a typical microstructure of resistance part well. Okay, so, whatever I explained, so this is the cross section, you see that notch, can you see that? So, this is the top and this is the bottom plate and I have an, a beautiful well nugget. Okay, so, again this is 1.2 mm. So, the well nugget is typically is about 4 mm well nugget diameter, the cross section. So, this is completely the molten and then if you look at the actual microstructure, you have a columnar growth, is not it? You see that, it is not very clear, but you can see that the growth has happened in here. And if you look at here, so that is what I talked about. So, this is like an, an, an a simple CTOD sample, is not it? What is CTOD? Impact, impact testing, what do you call it? How do you make impact testing sample? Notch. How does it look like? Notch impact sample. Is not it? Something like this. So, you have such concentration leading to a failure. And if you look at the structure, it is exactly like that. So, you will have a notch, right, and then a segregation at the center line. And this is a potentially very vulnerable structure, right. So, because the stress concentration at the well at the notch at the, at the fusion boundary can be very huge, but you will have to make sure that this weld is intact. Otherwise, uh, when you make a car, then you hear something. So, when you are, when weld is broken, you could hear. Good. Any questions so far? Good. We will move on. So, the electrodes, the type of electrodes what we use. So, there are uh, um, about 6, in fact, 7 nowadays. So, most commonly used electrodes are uh, shown in this figure. So, if you look at the cross section of the electrode, I will bring next class that electrode, you can also look at it. So, the most commonly used electrodes are uh, the type E okay, and then type B. So, based on the needs we can choose okay. and we can also change the electrode diameter from top to bottom that is also very useful. So, some for some reasons we can also change the diameter from top to bottom that we will see in the subsequent classes, but as of now most commonly used electrode types are listed here. Okay. So, if you look at the cross section, so this is the channel for water. Okay. So, water goes in there to cool the electrode. Okay. So, this is the phase. So, you, you may have a, a, a type A, it is a pointer type or a dome type. So, in our lab what we have is a dome type electrode. Okay. So, if you look at the… so. so something like this, okay. So, okay. So, you may also have a truncated type, this is also very commonly used electrode, okay. So, or flat or even also have a some concave radius, so, so it is also useful for some eccentric electrodes. So, this is all governed by the standard ISO standard 5182, okay, which is, it is actually governs the the electrode selection, electrode material. So, most commonly used uh, the material for making electrode is copper or copper alloys. So, obvious reason is it has to have a good electrical conductivity, also thermal conductivity, so that the heat can be extracted very effectively, right, from uh, the, uh, the, the phaying interface. The electrodes should not melt, okay. So, if your electrode is melting, then you have a problem. And the electrodes should also withstand large number of weld thermal cycles. Okay, so, if you use copper and you are welding a galvanized sheet, ok, 
okay, so what will happen? So most likely the zinc would diffuse to copper, then what will happen? Yeah. So you have an electrode on top and you have a material which is galvanized. Hmm? If a zinc diffuses to copper, would you form brass? Isn't it? So it is a big problem. So welding of uh, automotive steels, especially when the steel is galvanized through the electrode surface wears out because the moment you form brass, you also change the resistivity locally and you also increase the, the hardness, the layer becomes very brittle. So, you will end up changing the Vinegar diameter even if you use the same current, same welding time after 1000 wells, the Vinegar diameter will increase. So, even it can lead to splashing if you are operating it close to I max, right. So, the, the electrode worn out is a, is a big problem because of uh, the use of copper and copper alloys for welding uh, zinc coated steel. So, there are various uh, development has happened in the material. So, for example, uh, people started using uh, even a rare earth addition, so adding uh, uh, yttrium oxide okay, or zirconium oxide to copper to make it uh, uh, by a powder metallurgy route. So, obviously, these oxides enhance the electrical conductivity. Okay. So, they can improve the electrical conductivity so that you now we can avoid, we can increase or in, you can improve the mechanical properties of these electrodes. Okay. So, people thought about replacing the conventional copper with rare earth added the electrodes, copper electrodes or even entirely replacing copper with the other super materials for example, cobalt chrome. Okay. So, we can also achieve a reasonably good thermal and electrical conductivity by uh, these cobalt chrome alloys and uh, these alloys have a very good ice temperature properties, good. So, these are the common type of electrodes we use, okay. So, most commonly we use type E and type A, good. So, as I said the thumb rule for ideal well negative diameter is 4 times square root of thickness and it is also governed by the automotive industry. Okay, sometimes it will be 4.2 times thickness, okay, so does not matter. So, the ideal diameter is 4 times thickness. So, in order to achieve uh, uh, required diameter and we will have to generate uh, what you known as well growth curve, that is what I explained in the introduction. Okay. The well growth curve is extremely uh, significant to achieve uh, to arrive at uh, required well negative diameter and this is also influenced by the mass the m okay in turn mass is influenced by thickness as well as the cp specific heat capacity so if you change the chemistry slightly if you change the thickness slightly well growth curve changes okay so, that makes this process extremely unstable for even a small change in processing conditions. So, if a thickness is changed from 1.2 to 1.4 mm, you cannot use the same current and same welding time. You will have to invent the welding current welding time required for welding for the change in thickness. Okay. So, if so the welding process parameter what you develop, it is extremely unique to a given thickness for a material because m changes, is not it? So, obviously m change even if you keep a Cp change then I or T changes. Okay, so, to developing welding process parameters for resin spot welding is a very laborious experiment. Suppose if you want to use a material, you are developing a steel for an application. So, you will have to generate such a well growth curves for varying thicknesses and then give that to a customer who, so that the customer can choose a welding parameter for a thickness what he is using in some area. You may use a different thickness in different parts. So, then the same welding parameter cannot be used, right. So, how do we generate such an uh, uh, the welding parameters? So, we get the welding angle diameter measured as a function of current by fixing the time constant or as a function of weld time by fixing 
the current constant. Okay. Generally, the strength is uh, proportional to the, the well like a diameter. Diameter is higher, that means that strength is higher until the expulsion. So, what is expulsion? So, this is the maximum current at which the liquid is expelled, right? So, there is expulsion, so the I max. So, in this case, this is I max, is not it? Now, so we can generate such a growth curves where you, you change the current for a given time and measure the well naga diameter. Okay. So, once it becomes I max, obviously, and you, you start off uh, expelling the liquid which is there in between the welding electrode, and then the strength decreases because you will have a cavity, the liquid is going out. Okay. So, that is the I max what you have. And you can identify. So, now you suppose if you want to get a 4 square root of thickness, you can identify say suppose this current would give me the diameter of a 4 square root of thickness. Okay. And this is to identify the current required. So, once you identify the current, so you can also vary the time, is not it? So, time for a given current will also change the well naga diameter because i square rt q is a function of current and then time because contact resistance is fixed as long as load is fixed, is not it? So, you can also get a well naga time generated for a given current and identify the optimum well time required to generate a naga diameter of your interest, it is clear. So, you have to identify the I max, so the I max is the maximum current above which expulsion or splashing occurs. So, expulsion and splashing they mean the same. So, the I max is the maximum current above which expulsion or splashing happens. Okay, it's clear. This graph is clear, right? Yes or no? Okay, we'll move on. So, applications. So, I just put uh, one uh, example. So, this is I think Ford Fiesta. So, I think it is 2010 model, I remember correctly. So, if you look at uh, this is in a body in white, what is body in white? It is not human body, it is a car body. Okay, so, it is called body in white and then uh, if you look at the parts, so the all these the pillars, you see the black dots, these are all wells, this is transport wells. Okay, so, these flanges, the, the, the pillars and the, all the parts are all joined by this transport weld. Okay, so, you see the dots here, I do not know, it is difficult to see. Okay. So, you, in a typical uh, uh, car, automotive car, you have about 2000 to 5000 spot welds. Okay. So, the number of welds you make uh, per day in India it will run around a few crores. Okay. So, the statistic I talk, I took it from TWI, the Welding Institute of London. So, in Europe alone, they make about 15 crore wells every day. The similar amount you also see in, in India as well. Okay. So, the number of wells, resistance spot wells is made in a day, it is huge, enormous. Okay. So, we will have to make sure that you know, by uh, obtaining a good welding procedure. So, these wells uh, can withstand the life cycle of an automotive vehicle, right. So, the typical uh, life cycle life of an automotive is 300,000 kilometers, 3 lakh kilometers. Okay. So, the well should be intact. So, well breaks when the monkey jumps, then you have a problem. Okay. So, then uh, as, a, as a welding engineer, as a welding scientist, and we have a problem in hand, we will have to solve that. So, in, uh, the net, by nature, the resistance spot well is the one of the worst geometry you can generate. Okay? So, because of the well segregation, the notch effect. So, this is the worst thing you can have, but we will have to live with that. So, we will have to identify the well thermal cycle, which can give us the, the, the improved mechanical properties. Okay? It is always the welder's job. Okay? So, uh, steel, uh, the metallurgists who are developing steel, they always curse us, the welders, 
because they would generate a, such a beautiful microstructure you know, with all the properties you know they want strength ductility toughness ultimately you have to weld otherwise you can't make a car so they always tell us okay you guys always destroy such a beautiful microstructure okay so but that is how we will do it but still the demand is the weld should never fail okay so weld should never fail the failure should always happen except weld in this in anywhere else except weld so even though we have such a challenging uh, geometry we can make a uh, weld with can withstand uh, the uh, the uh, demanding load cycles okay so that is a challenge so we can work on so we'll see in, uh, in how we can improve how we can achieve the required mechanical properties of the wells resistant spot wells without going much in detail of the microstructure okay it's good so this is uh, uh, yeah common um, thermal cycles we use it for uh, the alloys like for example mild steel the uh, zinc coated or deep zinc coated and the electro galvanized material if you look at comparing the the bare sheet you always need to have a higher current isn't it for zinc coated steel so in this case the mild steel is operated between these regions okay so and then uh, uh, this is for electro zinc coated so you have to soften the galvanized layer so you need to pass a ramping current so that you, know, you soften the zinc coating layer and you also by doing so increase the the weld time in cycles so you see that weld time in cycles so you never give weld time in resistance spot well in seconds you always mention cycles okay so for example if a 10 cycles means so it will be 200 ms milliseconds okay it's clear so we generate such a curve okay so the one well growth curve what i'm showing here as a function of current and then time so we can also generate the window in which you can operate for a given composition and the thickness and this table shows the compatibility the availability and this i took it from a, a handbook and this is very important suppose in future if you want to know that can i weld aluminum to steel which is very difficult don't try okay can i do a steel steel okay you can do okay so you can choose by looking at this table okay so what whether i can weld uh, say for example uh, aluminum to aluminum it's b okay so we need to get an enhanced weld thermal cycle so that you can reasonably weld okay aluminum to stainless steel never try okay impossible i will challenge i will bet you i, I can even recommend for novel price you know if you generate a weld of aluminum stainless steel with any crack okay so the the most preferred the yes so yes will be steel to stainless steel reasonably okay and steel to steel it's very nice happy okay and if you go beyond uh, lead and zinc and things like that uh, it's very difficult for you to you know get a good well nugget diameter okay so you can refer this table so i just put it from the, the in a handbook so that you now you can identify the weldability for uh, varying interfaces okay so other important considerations apart from the current and time so what we have to uh, consider is the geometry okay so geometry of the weld uh, the one of the important factors you need to consider here is the distance between the weld okay so for example if you have an overlapping distance of l where exactly you will place the weld so you'll always place the weld by a, a distance half a distance okay between the l so this is the overlapping distance so l by 2 you place the weld and then the distance between the weld is extremely important okay because that is going to determine uh, uh, the uh, the path of the electric current okay so the s and l by 2 generally we have an uh, weld place no overlap configuration or half a distance between the the overlap and the s is the distance between two wells and this is very critical yes so why it is very critical okay we'll get back to that in next class but as of now you can assume that the s is also very critical if you keep it very close then you may also 
have a current pass through the previously welded nugget. Okay. Suppose if you are welding it uh, in this case, so if you are keeping it very close, so instead of the current passing through this location, it finds an another easy way because this is a solid junction now, there is no contact resistance, is not it? You already made a well nugget. So, current would follow the easiest path, it will start flowing, it will start reheating the already formed well nugget. Okay, it is clear. So, instead of that, you know, instead of making weld here, you will end up heating the well nugget here, the previously made well nugget. So, that is why the, the S is very critical, the minimum distance between two wells. Okay, so, there are some data you can find it out. Okay, so, these are all already established for uh, the parameters for low carbon steel as a function of thickness. So, what is the minimum S you need, what is the minimum overlap distance you need to have. Okay, and these are all calculated based on the fact that you know the, uh, the electrical resistance uh, or the contact resistance would be maintained at the phasing interface. And yeah, no need to concentrate on this, this I just show you to see that these are important. Okay. And then um, another geometry considerations when you are doing spot welds, it is never advisable to do such a weld because obviously the load distribution will be extremely bad in this case if you are doing welding. It is always advisable to and as zigzag wells and this will be much stronger geometrically than a structure like this here, is it it? So, this, this zigzag spot weld would result in balanced force and minimal distortion, is not it? It is obvious. So, that is why when you are welding it, it is not advisable to weld this configuration. So, we always good to weld this configuration, yes. So, this gives the, 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 uh, the balanced force as well as minimum distortion. So, some of the geometrical considerations because here load distribution is very, very, very important, right. So, you can look at uh, um, say for example, if you are having a, a, a very short L angle, it is not recommended, okay. You can do it, but ideally you should do it in a, an L flange. Okay. So, similarly instead of having an well like, like this and you can have a, a longer distance and you can also have a lot of geometrical considerations. Okay. The structural analysis is extremely important in resistance spot weld and the, all the automotive components, they optimize the structural load distribution and then they identify where exactly they have to place the well nugget. Okay. So, you cannot just like that you choose a point and weld because the, uh, the load distribution is, is a function of geometry of your component. So, the, the structural analysis, they do it for a component, they identify the location where it is ideal for the spot weld to be there, otherwise you will end up uh, the, uh, not balancing this force and you act, you, know, you induce a lot of stress partition to the weld nugget and weld is prone for failure, right, it is clear. So, we will also look at uh, the testing. So, how we can quantify the well nuggets maybe in next class, okay. Good. Any questions so far? Yes or no? So, we looked at uh, this class well thermal cycles, simple well thermal cycles, the enhanced well thermal cycle, and then mass effect, the effect of thicknesses, and then we looked at uh, the well growth curves, I max. And then we looked at the temperature distribution, temperature gradient, right. So, cooling rates, right, the width of the, the well nugget and then the, the heat affected zone. And we also looked at some geometrical considerations, the L and S, okay. We look at uh, in next class uh, how we can test or what are the testing methods we use to quantify the mechanical properties of these uh, spot wells. Right? Good.